Follow me around. Do you have a, uh, uh, something I can put on or wear? Anyhow, back to the story. Back to the story. Uh, John and I were sitting out here, t shirt okay? And uh, it was before a meeting, and, and I said something to him about uh, what he'd be doing his uh, Christmas poem at the end of this year. And <laughs> John made it real clear in short, in short order. He really, really likes that poem, and he's really happy that everybody enjoys it. However, he really was like to have something that was something new and perhaps fresh and different. And I said, well, gee, I know of a humorous uh, Christmas poem that's, uh, I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but, uh, but it's, it certainly is unusual. This, uh, and he said, oh, what is it? And I said, it's the, the title of it is The Cremation of Sam McGee. Oh. And, 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 and John said, and John, you, you all know how John is. And I said, John just lit up. He said, that's a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. We'll do it as a duet. <laughs> he said, we'll do it together. In which I said, uh, what do you mean together, white man? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so anyway, so we, you know, the, original, the original plan was John would do a stance and I do a stance, and John would do a stance and I do a stance. Well, for the poem that he had been doing in the past, you could do that. But for this particular poem, there are two characters in the poem, and one of the characters is telling the story. And it just doesn't work if you got two guys doing A, B, A, B. It just doesn't work. And so, John being the great leader and the delegator of authority he is, it's okay, you do it. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, that, that's how it all got to, to where it is now. And that being said, uh, before I start, there's one other thing, and that is, uh, we sadly lost uh, one of our dear, dear friends, uh, um, Bill Ferguson here, uh, recently. And, and the only reason I bring that up now is if you were blessed as I am to have known Bill early on, we, he and Jeannie were uh, new members of the chapter, and he was you know, completely healthy and, and very active out on the, the uh, flight line. And, well, Bill had a, a nickname, Wild Bill Ferguson, okay? And uh, Wild Bill had a, 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 what I would consider a a good salty personality and, and sense of humor. And it's and it, I mean, in practicing for this, I thought, you know, Bill would be the kind of guy who would have told this story. This is the sort of thing that, that uh, would be right up his line of work, right? And uh, looks like I'm about to be fitted for uh, a live microphone. <laughs> uh, don't lay it there. Don't lay it there. Like this? Hello. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Right? And I suspect if I move this a little bit, it will not lisp quite so badly. Put that put that in the pocket someplace. Alright. Last last thing. And I just like to go in that pocket, of course not long enough. The last, the last thing I've got to say is Wild Bill. This is for you, and I uh, hope you can help me pull this off. We all know Bill's here in spirit because Jeannie's here. Anywhere Jeannie goes, Bill goes. Because Bill and Jeannie are like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go through the magic door and become somebody else. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Name's Cap. I'm a prospector, gold prospector up in Yukon territory. But I come here to tell you about something that happened to me that, well, I think you're going to find a little surprise. It surprised me. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who toil the gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was a night on the marge of Lake LaBarge I created from Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he had left his home in the south to roam around the pole, God only knows. He was always cold. And that land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. <laughs> Louis often said his only way. He'd sooner live in hell. On Christmas Day, as we were rushing our way over the Dawson Trail, <laughs> you're talking your cold. 
through the purpose fold and stamp like a driven nail. And if our eyes have been closed, then our lashes froze. So sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun. The only one to whimper was Sam McGee. That very night, as we lay packed tight in our ropes beneath the snow, hogs were fed, the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe. And he turns to me and now, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seems so low, I couldn't say no. So he says with a sort of moan, It's this cursed cold that's got right hold. Don't chill me clean through to the bone. Yet paint me in dead, it's my awful dread of an icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. Well, a pal's last knee is a thing to eat, so I swore I wouldn't fail. We started on at the streak of dawn. But God, he looked yes and pale. He crouched the sleigh and he raved all day at his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. But it wasn't the breath of that land the death and a hurried horror driven. But a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise I'd given. It was lashed in the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brains, but you promised true, and it's up to you to create those last remains. Well, a promise made is a debt unpaid. The trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb, in my heart how I cursed that load. In the long, long night of the lone firelight, with the huskies round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows. God, how I loathed that thing. And every day, that quiet clay seemed to heavier and heavier grow. On I went, though the dogs were spent, Rub was getting low. Trail was bad, and I felt half bad, but I swore I would not give in. <laughs> Though I'd often sing to that hateful thing and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw it a trice. It was called the Alice Bay. I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, says I with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Mm. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found lying around and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames soared in the furnace ward. Such a blaze you'll seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. <laughs> The huskies, the heavens scowled and the huskies howled and the winds began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled in my cheeks and I don't know why. The breezy spoke and an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out and danced about it. Here again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked. And it's time I look. Then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam looking cool and calm in the heart of the first war. He wore a smile. You could see a mile. And he said, please close that door. For it's fine in here. And I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I live Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. <laughs> there are strange things. The hidden I sold, the hidden men toil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. Northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake of Barge. I greeted in San Miguel. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you.